Welcome back team to General Chemistry Chapter 7 Thermodynamics. We're going to start off with 7.1 where we talk about systems and processes. So here we're just going to look at the different types of systems and we have three important ones. So isolated system. It cannot exchange any type of energy or matter with the surroundings. And an example that we were provided was an insulated bomb calorimeter. Another one that we have is a closed system where it can exchange energy, but not matter with the surroundings. So that's a steam radiator. For example, the steam is exchanging the energy with its surroundings, but the contents inside that steam radiator are not being exposed to the surroundings. So that will become a closed system. In an open system, it can exchange both energy and matter with the surrounding, and that would be your pot of boiling water. So we move on to the first law of thermodynamics, and that's the equation that we have. So it's delta U is equal to Q minus W. So the delta U is change in internal energy of the system. Q is added heat to the system, and that's either in joules or calories. So one cal is equal to 4.184 joules. And the W is work done by the system. So the processes can be characterized based on a single constant property. So we have isothermal that occurs at a constant temperature and that's where our delta U is equal to zero. So the internal change of energy in the system is zero. So there's no change happening and that would be your isothermal. For adiabatic, exchanges no heat with the environment. So your Q is equal to zero. And isobaric occurs at a constant pressure. So on a pressure volume graph, you'll just see a flat horizontal line. And isovolumetric occurs at a constant volume. So the work is equal to zero in this scenario. Moving on to 7.2, we have states and state functions. So state functions describe the physical properties of an equilibrium state. And they are pathway independent and include pressure, density, temperature, volume, enthalpy, internal energy, Gibbs free energy, and entropy. The mnemonic for this is when I'm under pressure and feeling dense, and dense would be the small p, all I want to do is watch TV and get hugs. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> for standard conditions, we have 298 Kelvin, one atmospheric pressure, and one molarity concentration. It's standard enthalpy, standard entropy, and standard free energy. And we have phase changes that exist at characteristic temps and pressures. So fusion, which is melting, and freezing, which is crystallization and solidification, occur at the boundary between the solid and liquid phase. Whereas vaporization, which is evaporization or boiling, and condensation, which occur at the boundary between the liquid and the gas phase. We have sublimation or deposition that occur at the boundary between the solid and gas phases. And at temperatures above the critical point, the liquid and gas phase are indistinguishable. And at the triple phase, all three phases of matter exist in equilibrium. And I have a graph down here below to show that exact thing. So pause the video and have a look at this graph and what we were talking about before and see if you can make those connections. Moving on to 7.3, we're going to talk about heat. So the temperature is a scaled measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance, whereas heat is the transfer of energy that results from the differences of temperatures between the two substances. Here we have the zeroth law of the thermodynamics, where objects are in thermal equilibrium only when their temperatures are equal. So we have the same equation from the first law that we talked about before. So it's delta U is equal to Q minus W. And when system absorbs heat, it becomes endothermic. So we have a positive Q value. If the system is releasing heat, it's exothermic and we have a negative Q value. So moving on, we have a calorimetry, and that's the process of measuring transferred heat. And here we have the equation where Q is equal to mc delta t. So the way I like to remember this is m cat is cute with a Q. So the Q refers to the heat 
which is measured in joules, we have the mass for m. The c is the specific heat constant, and the delta t is the change in temperature. Now, this could be either in both Kelvin or degrees Celsius. Moving on to bomb kilometers, there's no heat exchange, so the q value is equal to zero. So we have the equation here. We have a delta u of a system plus a delta u of the surrounding, which will become delta u of the kilometer is equal to q kilometer minus w kilometer, which is equal to zero. If we were to simplify this, it will become delta u system is equal to negative delta u surroundings. And because no work is done, we come to Q system is equal to negative Q surroundings. And we can further expand this equation with the Q is equal to MCAT equation for both sides. Just pause the video, have a look, see if you understand this. Once you do, we have an example right here. So the example is one cup containing 100 grams of water at 300 Kelvin is mixed into another cup containing 200 grams of water at 450 Kelvin. What is the equilibrium temperature of the system? So we're going to write Q cold is equal to minus Q hot, and that's for the different temperatures. So we're going to expand that into M cold, C for water, and delta T cold for the colder temperature, and then M hot, C H2O, and negative delta T for hot. We're going to expand and for mass, cold, we have 100 grams that's already given in the equation. We're going to use our specific heat constant for water, which is 1 cal per gram times Kelvin. And because the constant has a Kelvin, we're going to make sure that our temperatures are in Kelvin as well when we input them in. So we have our Tf minus 300 Kelvin and is equal to 200 grams of the mass of the hot substance of water and we have the same specific heat capacity and then we have 450 Kelvin minus Tf. We're going to simplify all of this through where our Tf is equal to 400 Kelvin and that's our answer. So we're going to move forward to the heating curves where Q is equal to ML where M is mass in grams and L is latent heat where it's cal over grams. And that's the graph for that. So pause the video, make sure you understand this graph and how it correlates with the equation. And once we're all good, we're going to move forward to 7.4 where we talk about enthalpy. Now, enthalpy is the measure of potential energy of a system found in intermolecular attractions and chemical bonds. And that's the first law of thermodynamics that we talked about before. So for Hess's law, the total change in potential energy of a system is equal to the changes of potential energies of the individual steps of the process, and we show this by the delta H equation here. So delta H reaction is equal to H products minus H reactants. Now, if we have a negative delta H value, we know that it's going to be an exothermic reaction. However, if we have a positive delta H value at the end, we know that this will be an endothermic reaction. So to calculate bond energy, we put delta H reaction is equal to the sum of the delta H bonds broken and the sum of delta H bonds formed. So we can simplify this as total energy absorbed minus total energy released. Moving on to 7.5, we talk about the entropy. So that's the disorder of the system. Another way to say that is a measure of the degree to which Energy has been spread throughout a system or between a system and its surroundings, and that creates our second law of thermodynamics. A ratio of heat transferred per mole per unit Kelvin and is maximized at equilibrium. So this is the equation that we have where entropy is represented by delta S. So that's the change in entropy. And once again, the units are joules per mole Kelvin is equal to Q rev which is the heat gain or lost over temperature, which is in Kelvin. So another way to show this is delta S universe is equal to delta S of the system plus the delta S of surrounding, which has to be greater than zero. And next, 
We're going to move on to chapter 7.6 where we talk about Gibbs free energy. So it's derived from both enthalpy and entropy values for a given system. Like we said before, when we have a positive delta G, we know that it's non-spontaneous and it's going to proceed in the reverse direction. A delta G value that's equal to zero will be in equilibrium. And we can write that as delta H is equal to T delta S, where delta H is enthalpy, which is the heat, is equal to temperature times entropy, which is delta S. And negative delta G value proceeds in the forward direction and is spontaneous. So overall, we can write that delta G, which is Gibbs free energy, is equal to enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. And on the side here, we have if delta H is positive or negative, we, it's either exo or endo. And temperature is in Kelvin, where it's degrees Celsius plus 273 to get our Kelvin value. And entropy, which is the disorder, if it's negative S, it will decrease and positive delta S will increase the disorder. So this is spontaneous at higher temperatures where we have a positive enthalpy value and a positive entropy value. For non-spontaneous at all temperatures, we have a positive enthalpy value and a negative entropy value. And spontaneous at all temperatures, it's negative enthalpy and positive entropy. And spontaneous at lower temperatures, we have a negative entropy and negative enthalpy as well. So standard Gibbs free energy of a reaction, we have the equation delta G reaction is equal to the sum of the delta G of products minus the sum of delta G of the reactants. And the standard Gibbs free energy of equilibrium constant, we have delta G reaction is equal to negative RT ln KEQ where R is the ideal gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, and KEQ is the equilibrium constant. And Gibbs free energy from reaction quotient is the same thing, except we go delta G reaction is equal to the standard Gibbs free energy plus RT ln Q. Instead of KEQ, we have the quotient in this equation. And we can simplify that further, where RT is equal to ln Q over KEQ. And that's the end of chapter 7. I'll see you guys for chapter 8. Take care, everyone.